So this is a video I've been planning on doing quite some time ago. Uh, earlier this year, I launched a video where I ranked designer men's fragrances from most masculine, or actually from uh, unisex down to most masculine. And this is the woman's version. I have 22 women's designer fragrances, and I'm going to rank them from the most feminine to the most masculine. So, so if you want to find out about these fragrances and where I rank them, please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. I'm gonna jump right to this because this is gonna be a longer video. And we're gonna get started with a very, very popular a ladies fragrance called Chanel Number no. 5. This is this is it right here. Chanel Number no. 5 is a very um, iconic, uh, historic fragrance for not only for the house of uh, Chanel, but also uh, just in general. Um, I think probably, I, I don't know how many bottles they've sold throughout the history, but it came out in the early, 20s, um, in the early 1900s, but it's around the 20s. Um, if you're ever curious to learn a little bit about this, there's a movie called Coco and Igor. Uh, it's a French film about Coco Chanel and uh, her relationship with um, Igor Stravinsky. And during the film, there's a really small subplot where she heads to grass and um, and um, film. She discusses making this fragrance. Uh, this is all about aldehydes, ilang ilang, iris, and sandalwood. Now, I think this one is definitely more on the feminine side of the fragrances, at least to me, but if you are a man and you do wear this, let me know your thoughts. And if you're a woman and you think it's masculine, do let me know your thoughts in the comment section as well. So that's uh, Chanel number five. And then we're gonna go to Gucci Guilty Absolute Parfum, this one right here. And this is a more recent uh, release under uh, Alessandro Michele from Gucci, the creative director, created by um, Alberto Moria. Now this one actually I think is a very, very unisex fragrance. Uh, it's really right down the middle of uh, femininity and masculinity. I think it's uh, both uh, very appropriate for um, men and women. Uh, this is all about uh, blackberry, cypress, rose, patchouli, and woody notes. So if you like it fruity, if you like it woody with patchouli and rose, this is definitely going to be right up your alley. So check that one out from Gucci. Um, Dior Diorissimo is a favorite of mine. Another classic historic, I think it dates back to the 50s. Um, I don't remember who the perfumer behind this one is, but this is a very fresh floral fragrance, like ultra fresh. And recently I did a video uh, about Parlement de Parfum where Benjamin was mentioning um, you can't really extract Lily of the Valley. And this is all about Lily of the Valley. It does smell like Lily of the Valley. It's funny because I also spent a whole day in Paris, May Day, where everybody is like selling and giving uh, traditionally the, the Lily of the Valley flower. So I always love the way that smells and it's really, really authentic. This smells truly like Lily of the Valley in a bunch where you're smelling it. But I find this to be more on the feminine side of uh, feminine versus masculine ladies offerings. It also has a very classic touch. So this is Diorissimo from Dior. I also think that Chanel number no. 5 is also very classic, whereas the Gucci one we just spoke about is um, very modern, I think. So next up, uh, we're going to the house of Maison Margiela. This is a ladies targeted fragrance called Lipstick On. Now this is Iris Vanilla Tonka Beans Heliotrope Galbanum. This one to me smells like it's a combo of uh, a lip, well it's definitely lipsticky. And you know Dior Homme Parfum, it's all about Iris or even any of the Dior Homme uh, collection. This one kind of hints at, but it does go a little more lipsticky. And the unique thing about this fragrance is it uh, dries down to Tonka Beans. Um, it almost smells like Feb Delicious with a lipsticky touch. So if you like Feb Delicious, if you like Dior Homme, uh, that the, the flankers and you also like things like lipsticky lipstick um, rose from uh, Frederick Mall check this one out I think it's an underrated one from this house and I really love it I have a review of this one a full review as well as this one so this one I find to be right in the middle of the masculine versus uh, feminine uh, ladies offerings so next we're going to a, another one from this house Maison Margiela, it's Beach Walk. And this one is all about coconut, ilang ilang musk, heliotrope, lemon, pink pepper. This one's supposed to smell like a beachy skin, like you've been sitting at the beach, you've 
dipped into the water, the sea, come back, suntan, sun lotion, suntan lotion, you're, you know, it's dried up and that's supposed to uh, smell like how it smells. So there's coconut in here, obviously. Ylang ylang, and of course it's floral, it's musky, it's uh, a little bit almondy with the heliotrope, and then a little spiciness with the pink pepper. I do like this one a lot. Um, it's it's a great scent. It's close to the skin, obviously, because it's a smell, supposed to smell like uh, skin. Uh, it's very unique. And this one I find to be, even though it's targeted to women, these do say uh, female fragrance, uh, same as this one. Um, the other ones that are unisex, they say shared fragrance. This one I find to be sort of in the middle, not necessarily right in the middle, a little before the middle of uh, uh, masculine versus feminine of the feminine fragrances. So this is Beach Walk from Maison Margiela. Next we're going to uh, Black Orchid from Tom Ford. And this is a very, very uh, great um, offering, an excellent offering from the house of Tom Ford. And I think this one, I, I, I definitely see a lot of men uh, posting that they wear it. Even though it's targeted to women, I think it's very, very unisex personally. It's got chocolate, it's got truffle, patchouli, orchid, vanilla, incense. And I would put this one right up to the top of the list to be more on the unisex side rather than the feminine side. This one to me is definitely very, very unisex, just like the Gucci. And I think it's a, it's a great it's a great scent. I like this one a lot. It's actually a, a very very popular fragrance from the Tom Ford collection. So that's Black Orchid. And uh, next up we're going to Tom Ford again. And this is Noir Femme. This one right here. Now this one's all about kulfi. It's a vanilla pistachio ice cream from India. I believe it's from India. And you also have vanilla, amber, sandalwood, mastic resin. And now this one actually is very very similar to uh, Tom Ford Noir Extreme whereas this one goes a little more floral. I have a comparison video with this one and the men's version, the Tom Ford Noir Extreme and I find to be this one at the top, closer to the top because I mean they have a men's version, just this one goes a little floral. I, I just um, I feel like they should have just released one fragrance, a shared fragrance, and uh, rather than a men's version, which and, and this is the woman's version. So it's kind of odd that they did that. Um, because maybe they wanted to make this one a little more femme. But I find it to be very, very close to the men's version, which I felt was a little redundant. Whereas, um, I think when they released the men's version, they said, okay, this is very, very unisex. We're going to release a women's version. I'm just making that up. But I think that might have, that's probably what happened because the other came out first. But if you, if you like um, Tom Ford Noir Extreme, check out the Noir Femme. I, I think it's very, very unisex. It's very, very close to the original. So next up, we're going to a very iconic, classic, historic fragrance from the house of Guerlain. I don't have the original bottle. I have the refill uh, cartridge bottle here. It's Shalimar. So it's vanilla, iris, bergamot, tonka beans. And this one actually goes right close to the middle. I find this one to be very, very unisex to me. Um, it does scream a little classic, but it doesn't matter. Um, it reminds me of like relatives, older relatives. As a kid, I used to smell this on a uh, woman. And uh, even though it's for women, I find it to be very, very unisex, especially since it's vanilla, it's iris, bergamot, tonka bean. Tonka bean to me screams very, very uh, um, masculine or very unisex at least. And this one actually doesn't disappoint with the unisex uh, factor. I think I know a lot of men do wear Shalimar. I just don't know which version. This is the Eau de Toilette, but you have so many flankers for this fragrance, so many out there. So this is Shalimar from um, on. And then we're going to the house of Mugler for Angel. And Angel is uh, one of those fragrances that's a, a gourmand. It's a groundbreaking fragrance from this house. Um, it's historic. It came out in 1992, created by Olivier Cresp and someone else. I can't remember who the other perfumer is, but this is definitely a groundbreaking fragrance to kind of um, springboard the gourmand uh, styles of fragrance. Um, this is probably one of the most popular ones. But to me, this is more about patchouli than gourmand, but I think it's more about the combination of the gourmand than patchouli. You've got chocolate, patchouli, caramel, honey, vanilla, and a lot of fruity notes. Um, it's beautiful fragrance. It's it's one that's like imprinted in my memory from smelling it over and over and over again in the 90s when I was going to film school and I worked in a photo lab. Ladies used to come in with their perfume on, with this stuff on, and my nose would have been used to the, the chemicals for printing and uh, developing film, and then you'd smell this come in. Man, it would just be amazing. So 
This is uh, awesome. It's actually, I find it to be not necessarily right down the middle. I think it's a little more feminine than, than um, right down the middle, but still it's it's got very unisex appeal to it. So this is Mugler's Angel. Next we're going to Mugler again, and this time we're going to Angel Muse. Now I find this one to be a lot more unisex than uh, this one because you have vetiver in here, but it's not all about vetiver. You've got um, patchouli, of course. This is a prominent note here. You've got hazelnut um, cacao or like a Nutella spread, something like that, because it's chocolatey, it's creamy, it's nutty, and then you've got vet vetiver and then pink pepper. It's really, really delicious. Um, I think I'm digging this one a lot more than the regular Angel now, but uh, I think the performance is not as good as the original Angel. But as far as deliciousness, this one is really, really delicious. And to me, it's like a gourmand perfume, and gourmand uh, fragrances from niche houses tend to end up being unisex, so this one has very, very unisex uh, qualities to it, and I find it to be right down the middle. So this is Mugler's Angel Muse, and then we're going to another Mugler here. This is Alien Oud. I didn't feature Alien here because I don't have a full bottle of a Alien, but I have Alien Oud. And Alien Oud I find to be very uh, unisex as well. I think I find it to be a little more unisex than this one because of that oud note, but it is all about jasmine after all. You've got jasmine, amber, cashmere, and cardamom, um, but oud is king here. It's all about the oud, nothing but the oud, but it's actually lots of oud with jasmine. So it starts off with jasmine, but as it's drying down and drying down and drying down, you get a lot of oud here along with the other notes. So check this one out. I have a review for it. It's a uh, Mugler Alien Oud Magisto, and uh, that one's a good uh, unisex. I find it to be defi definitely more on the unisex side than the feminine side. So next we're going to this one right here, Cartier Le Barzère du Dragon. This one right here, one of the fragrances I fell in love with as soon as I smelled it. And what I like about it is it's the almond. It's, if you like almonds and patchouli, this is definitely one for you. But it's not only about the almonds and patchouli, you also have amaretto, so it's boozy. You got amaretto, almonds, vetiver, patchouli, benzoin, amber. I can, I can say this is one of my favorite fragrances from Cartier. It's definitely um, up there, closer to the unisex. It does have feminine qualities, but that patchouli, the amaretto, the almonds, and vetiver give it a more of a unisex uh, appeal to it. It's really delicious. If you like anything almondy, almond liqueur, patchouli, definitely check out Le Bazaar du Dragon. Next, we're going to Chanel Coco Noir. All right, this one's really lovely. This is a, a, a flanker to the original Coco um, from Chanel. And this is patchouli, rose, sandalwood, grapefruit, olibanum, tonka beans. Um, it's definitely got the qualities of the original Coco, but it's a darker take on it, of course, the name Noir is on there, and it, it, I think it does go masculine, but I don't think it's as masculine as some of these other ones. It's still definitely between the 20s and the 10s, uh, and I, I find it to be a little more feminine. So if you're a guy and you're watching this video and you're looking at exploring feminine fragrances, ones at least that go more masculine, this one I think definitely to me is more on the feminine side in this list. There is probably multiple lists that could be made with this um, video. These are the fragrances I have, but this is a great, great release. I love, I love, love, love the patchouli in here. It's it's intoxicating, and um, women wear this stuff and they walk around, and I could smell them. I can totally smell them. But I think it's the original that I really smell. This one is actually a little more subdued, I think. Um, it's a little closer to the skin, uh, but it's, it's got more depth to it. It's got like thickness to it. It's really nice. Check it out, Chanel Coco Noir. And then next, I have two versions of the fragrance. It's Chanel number no. 19. Um, it's Galbanum. It's all about Galbanum. It's the original Eau de Toilette, and I do have the Poudre here as well. And this is an ultra green fragrance. If you like green smelling things, you've got to try this one. It does scream a little feminine, but man, it's, it's, it's green. It's all about Galbanum. It's a, a, a resin made from a flower, I believe. That's what it is. And uh, it's, it's to die for fragrance. It's Iris, Galbanum, Vetiver, Musk. Lots more stuff happening. Definitely has the Chanel DNA, but it's it's a great scent. I'm po I'm seeing a lot of Galbanum pop up in fragrances recently, um, and this one actually is also still part of the 20 to 10 uh, category of fragrances rather than 10 to 1. Uh, I find it to be a little more on the feminine side. So that's Chanel number no. 19, either in the EDT, EDP, or Poudre uh, concentration. All right, we got a few more left. Tom Ford Orchid Soleil, and now I find this one to be. 
more on the feminine side, but still, uh, it definitely leans uh, unisex. This is all about tuberose because of the tuberose note. You got whipped cream, you got lily. It's actually really delicious. It's very beachy, it's sunny, it's summery, but it's got depth to it, so it's not like a fresh fragrance. It's intense uh, because it's thick. Uh, the tuberose is very, very creamy, and then that whipped cream added to it gives it a more of a um, creamy vibe to it. And then, of course, there's that lily. So it's, it's a very, very floral, creamy, beachy, sunny, uh, almost like suntan lotion-y fragrance. So this is Orchid Soleil from Tom Ford. Next, it's the Aromatics Elixir. Now, I've put this in the designer category because it's all, you know, very designer connected. And this is a very classic. It goes back to the 70s. And I have a comparison of this with Dahlia with Aramis 900. So the fragrances are very, very similar to me. They are very similar. Aramis are the men's fragrances. This one is for women. And this is all about patchouli. Uh, oak moss, patchouli, chamomile, aldehydes, incense. It's, it's very, very good. It's very, very masculine. I find this to be more on the masculine. Definitely unisex, Not like it's not like men made for men, but it, in the spectrum, in the top list, I find this one in, uh, in the top 10 to, uh, to one. So this is Aromatics Elixir. It's classic, it's patchouli, it's oak moss. Check it out, I really love that one. Next, it's Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue for Women. Uh, this is a very popular fragrance. Now, this is Lemon, Apple, Cedar, Bamboo, Musk, and Bellflower. There's additional notes in there, but this is so fresh and refreshing. I prefer this one over the men's. The men's version just smells not, not very good to me. I, I just think it's been damaged or been reformulated too much. This one smells so good, and it compares to Creed's Jardin d'Amalfi. Test them out, compare the two together, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you want a cheap alternative to Creed's Jardin d'Amalfi, this is definitely it. Um, it's a great scent. I think I find this to be more on the um, not 10 to 1 uh, category. So that's Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. And then we have this one right here, Comme des Garçons Grace. Comme des Garçons. Uh, this is Grace for Grace Coddington. And this is a very fresh rose fragrance with lots of musk and peach blossom, mint and bergamot. It's juicy, it's crisp, it's very, very refreshing. And I find this one to be right down the middle. It's like right down the middle of feminine to unisex. And uh, if you like fresh fragrances, if you like rose and some fruity touches, definitely check out Grace. Next, we're going with Loewe Ve, oh, oh, one woman, this one right here. And this one is very sandalwoody with vanilla, bitter orange, pink pepper. So you've got sandalwood with spices and fruity uh, citrus touches. It's really lovely. It dries down to very sandalwoody and it hints a little bit at um, the famous sandalwood, Santal uh, 33 uh, from uh, Le Labo. A little bit, not too much. So that's why I find this one to be more unisex than feminine. Um, just the sandalwood just kind of is masculine to be, uh, it's a woody note, so I find woody notes to be more on the masculine side. So this is, even though for women, um, I think it's very, very unisex. And if you don't know the brand, it's a Spanish brand owned by LVMH. Check it out. It's 001 Woman by Lo Ave. Next, we got Jason Wu. Jason Wu, this one right here. I love this one. It's fig, lots of fig, and it's a very peppery fig because you have pink pepper in the notes as well. So it's pink pepper, fig fruit, peony, lily of the valley, musk. Uh, it does go a little floral. It also kind of smells like tea to me. So it's tea-ish, it's uh, floral, it's fruity, it's spicy. I think it's very, very uh, unisex to me and it's right down the middle for me at least. So that's Jason Wu, Jason Wu. Here, one more fragrance, actually two more. This is the second to the last. This is YSL Rive Gauche Pour Femme, a fragrance that has a lot of memories for me. My mom used to wear it back in the 70s, um, and I love the bottle. It's a total standout bottle. Every time I saw, I saw this bottle, I would be like, visually, I'm a visual person, so as a kid, I just totally stood out because it's a blue canister, stripes, you know, those kind of things. But this one, to me, I find to be more on the feminine side. It's aldehydes, it's oak moss, it's rose, green notes, uh, iris. It's very aldehydic. It, it kind of hints at this one. I think probably it was inspired by Chanel Number no. 5. Um, but very, very aldehydic. It's very, very classic. Uh, it does remind me of the 70s when my mom wore it because I remember her uh, wearing it. I could smell it on her. But to me, if I was to put this in the ranking, it would be definitely on the more feminine side. So that's uh, YSL's Rive Gauche. Last but not least, it's this one right here. It's Sisley's Izia. This one right here. Now this one's very, very juicy, very similar to this, but it has a little 
little more floral qualities to it. So this one kind of would be more in the 20 to 10 category, even though we have 22 fragrances here. It's definitely uh, more on the feminine side, still screams a little bit unisex, but this is very, very rosy, lots of rose. You also have some aldehydes. You've got angelica, bergamot, and uh, floral notes. It, it's, it's really beautiful. It's a great fragrance from Sicily, another designer that's not kind of underrated. It's sort of like this because they have everything. They have makeup, skincare, all those kind of things. It's um, a great house. So check it out. This is Sicily's... Um, is yeah. All right, so if I'm gonna rank them, this is how I'm going to rank them. So we're starting out with this one at 22. It's Rive Gauche Pour Femme. Then at 21, we're going to Diorissimo by Dior. At 20, it's Chanel number no. five. Orchid Soleil at number 19. And then uh, the um, number 19 is at number 18. And then we have Coco Noir at number 17. And 16 is Beach Walk. At number 15, it's Angel. At number 14, it's Izia, this one right here. Uh, 13 is Le Baiser du Dragon. Shalomar is at number 12. Grace Coddington by Comte de Garçon is at number 11. At number 10 is uh, Angel Muse. Number 9 is Lipstick On. Jason Wu is number 8. 7 is Mugler Alien Oud, Magisto. 6 is Dolce and Gabbana Light Blue. Loewe 001 Woman is at number five. Number four is Noir Femme by Tom Ford. Number three is Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme. Number two is Black Orchid by Tom Ford. And my number one is Clinique Elixir, Aromatics Elixir. There you have it, that's the list guys. Let me know what your thoughts are on these fragrances. If you're a man, do you wear any of these fragrances? Let me know. Um, I just want to say that there are no gender, there's no gender behind perfumes. I think if you like a smell, please wear it. Um, it's just a, what we should do. We shouldn't be afraid if a fragrance is targeted to women. That's for women, I don't want to wear it. Because I've been doing this for, for several years now and I have no problem wearing these fragrances. I do have more and perhaps I'll do a niche version of this video in the future. But if you feel confident, just wear it. Because if it smells good on you and you like the way it smells, might as well wear it because uh, if you like it, don't pass it up. Anyway, those are my thoughts today for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.